Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. It's Resurrection Sunday. Where the praise is at this morning. Come on, jump to your feet and open your mouth and give God glory on this morning. We serve a risen Savior. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Come on, open your mouth and give him glory this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. This is why we're here to celebrate the king. Come on, help us celebrate him. Open your mouth. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. He died. He was buried. But he got up and he's coming again. Come on, you ought to get excited in the temple this morning. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Tell somebody, I was glad when they said, let's go to the house of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I came to lift them this morning. How about you? Go greet two or three people and say, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Come on, tell somebody, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Come on, nothing but praise today. It's a day to celebrate. It's a day to magnify him. It's a day to give him glory. Come on, this is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, you ought to open your mouth and bless him. Don't you let that suit stop your praise. Don't you let those new shoes stop your praise. Take them shoes off and give God the glory. Loosen up that tie and open your mouth and bless him. Hallelujah, he's worthy, he's worthy. He's worthy, he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy of it. Hallelujah. We bless him. Come on, put your hands together this morning. We come to celebrate the king. While you clap your hands, open your mouth and bless him. Come on. Hallelujah. Oh, living, he loved me. to 
Aleluia! Thank God for Jesus. <laughs> Thank God for Jesus. Hey God. Love you guys. Y'all look so good this morning. Glory to God. Hey. In the book of Acts chapter 2, and from the words of Peter, ye men of Israel, 2 and 22, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God, among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you as ye yourselves also know him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain whom God hath raised up having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad. Moreover also, my flesh shall rest in hope because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption thou hast made known to me the ways of life thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance men and brethren let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David that he is both dead and buried and his support his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with him an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, the Lord saith unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God have made that same Jesus whom ye crucify, both Lord and Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your great love to us and your great gift of your son, Jesus, whose blood was shed for us and the remission of our sin. Lord, we ask you to help us today to praise and glorify you as all we can in a way that is so thankful. Bless your word today as it goes forth that it might find a lodging place in the hearts of men that they may be saved, that they may know you and the power of your resurrection and being in fellowship with you. We thank you for all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.
your life. Ooh, but Jesus, oh sweet Jesus, He never answered him for He knew that Satan.
shout of glory. Somebody look to your neighbor and say, he lives. Come on, find another neighbor and say, he lives. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. I know he lives. Thank you. 
Hallelujah. How many of you can testify that life is worth living now? Hallelujah. Because of what he did for us, uh, certainly we want to say happy Resurrection Day to all of you that are here in the sanctuary. You look so beautiful today. Give yourselves a hand on today. Give yourselves a hand. And while you're doing that, clap your hands for our internet audience. Let's make them feel welcome. We want to say thank you for joining us this morning uh, for our Resurrection Sunday service and you know I, sometimes I, I make the joke and, and say you know it's been about a year since I've seen some of you that I'm not going to do that this year I'm just going to say it's good to see you it's good to see you in the house of God and we thank God for all of you I'm going to ask if perhaps there are any first time visitors that are here if this is your first time being here at Greater Bethlehem Temple Church wherever you're from I'm going to ask that you please stand remain standing for just a moment until we can identify all of you thank you for standing here to my left any other first time but up front God bless you thank you for standing towards the center towards the rear over to my right God bless you come on put your hands together make them feel welcome don't sit down yet we want our ushers to see who you are they have a, a special visitor information card that they want to give you and that card that they're giving you uh, will uh, we'll ask that you give us your name and where you're visiting from so that we'll have a record of your visit and at the end of service if you would you can take that card to our visitor information and welcome Center, which is located right outside these doors here in our main lobby where we have a free gift awaiting you. And it's just our way of saying thank you for being our guest here at Greater Bethlehem Temple Church. Put your hands together one more time for them. You may take your seats in the presence of God. Wonderful to have uh, all of the visitors that are here. And then, of course, we know that there are others that this isn't your first time being with, with us. But we're so glad that you're here on this morning. Uh, Deacon Henderson let me know that his son is here. Now, I don't know why Deacon didn't give me his son's name, but his son and his family visiting from Detroit. Where's uh, Deacon Henderson's son and family? Give God praise for them so far in the back. Man, y'all need to come up front. But that's all right. That's all right. God bless you. Wonderful to have you here. And uh, we certainly thank God for you and uh, for the wonderful blessing that your father is uh, to this house as well. You, amen. You may take your seats as as well. I just want to stop for a moment and recognize our Duck Hill family. Duck Hill, you in the house on today? Duck Hill, where are you? Stay and stand, Duck Hill, wherever you are. Uh, out there they are, over towards, amen. Give God praise for them. Amen. Where is uh, Lady Jessica this morning? Lady Jessica, where, where is she sitting? Am I missing? Sister Jessica, would you come on up and just uh, greet, the, greet the saints of God? Uh, just, just have a word. Come on up. Praise God for your first lady, Doug Hill, and uh, for our sister, Sister Stevenson. Hallelujah. Amen. She's not in a hurry today. That's all right. <laughs> God bless you. Praise the Lord. Truly, it's always an honor and a blessing to be home on this morning. I just thank and praise God for my being here, and I'm just here to praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, amen. Uh, thank you, Sister Stevenson. Uh, and, uh, of course, we love having our Duck Hill family and all the, the, the saints of God from everywhere that are here gathered with us on this morning. I want to just make mention of, I have all these notes to make mention on Easter Sunday. They tend to overdo it with all these notes. I want to make mention of the junior ushers that are here uh, serving on today. Praise God for our junior ushers that are, are working this morning as well. 
We certainly thank God for, for all of you and, and, and just in your respective places, those of you that are here serving in the house of God. Uh, of course, we certainly want you to be in prayer for those that can't be here on today and those that are, are visiting and traveling and otherwise have other engagements. We want to make mention of the funeral service, of course, uh, for Brother Calvin Bilbrew that's going to be held on on uh, this coming week. This, of course, Brother Calvin is the husband uh, to Sister Gloria Bilbrew, the son of uh, Mother Mary Bill Brew, uh, remember to pray for that family. His service will be uh, this coming Tuesday, April 2nd at 12 o'clock noon here at Greater Bethlehem Temple Church. Uplift that family. They could certainly use your prayers uh, that God will bless and strengthen them. And then, of course, pray for all the others that have lost loved ones uh, on this morning uh, uh, as well. Uh, I want to, Sister Minnie wants me to uh, welcome Sister Quick back in service. Sister Quick, where is Sister Quick? Raise your hand, Sister Quick. Oh, over to my, that's right, over to my right. God bless you, Sister Quick. Wonderful to have you here. Sister Minnie, you owe me for that, 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 quick, that quick text message there. That's all right. I want to uh, make mention, of course, uh, while we're doing prayer, uh, while you're uh, doing your prayer requests, of course. You can now uh, go to our website and leave your prayer requests uh, on the prayer request form, and that's probably the most uh, expeditious way that we'll get uh, any prayer requests. And so we just want to remind you of that. Let me give you a couple of reminders. And then after that, I'm going to, uh, uh, we'll hear uh, from someone else. I want to make mention, of course, that the Southeastern District Council is coming this week. Praise God for the Southeastern District Council. Uh, back in Jackson, one more time at Greater Bethlehem Temple Church. Of course, those dates, April 4th through the 6th, that's this week that is happening. The Blessed Way, of course, and you can see there a lineup of the speakers that will be here uh, for, uh, be a part of the uh, the council as well. But beyond that, you can get more information if you just go to the council website now. Of course, we are asking that you continue to register. There's no registration cost. Just go to sedcpcaf.net. Let them know that you'll be here, that you plan to attend. And we look forward to having a wonderful time with all of the saints of God. I want to also make mention uh, that the youth department, young people, you in the house on today, young people? Oh yeah, okay. Uh, they, they are a little bit scattered today. Young people are, are planning a very special trip to Washington, D.C., and I think that we have a clip. If you'll help me roll that clip uh, just to tell you a little bit more about what we're expecting for that Praise trip. Praise the Lord, everybody. Pack your bags because we have some exciting news for you. The youth department is headed to Washington, D.C., May the 17th through May the 19th. What can you expect? We will take a tour of the National Museum of African American History and Culture. And we are even working on securing entrance into the White House. But most of all, we will have a hot time as we support our youth leaders as they minister at Greater Morningstar Apostolic Church. We have limited seating, so don't wait. Seats are going fast and you don't want to miss out on this exciting adventure. See one of your youth leaders for more details. Amen. That's going to be an exciting trip, uh, young people. So uh, bear in mind that it's coming really quickly. You've got just about a, a month to get ready, or maybe a little bit better than that, to get ready. They'll have a table out in the lobby today. Stop by and let them know that you're interested in going, that you're planning on going, and get any information that you need. Of course, you can see any of the youth leaders for more details. I uh, want to make mention today, of course, it being Resurrection Sunday, uh, the, the kitchen staff has already made uh, preparation for Resurrection Sunday dinner, the fifth Sunday dinner. It'll be at the, just the regular cost uh, of your uh, Sunday dinners, but they do have dinner in the fellowship hall on, to, on uh, this afternoon, so you can go back and stop to get part of, of that as well. I, I want to uh, ask Brother Justin uh, Moore to come and join us on stage, and I just want him to give you a little bit of an update uh, about our prison ministry, the successes that we've, uh, been, uh, we've been seeing there with our prison ministry, Brother Justin. All right, praise the Lord, everybody. The prison ministry had a great success. We had over 34 people get baptized in Jesus' name. All right, all right. And we had 20 receive the gift for the Holy Ghost. It was a wonderful experience. Yes, yes. Yes, it was a very wonderful service. It was like over 50 seats in there, but they, they could come from everywhere and like just get a more seats in there and they just were so hungry for God and it was such a wonderful experience. Thank you. 
Amen. Come on, you can do a little bit better than that. Over 30 got baptized in Jesus' name and 20 received the gift of the Holy Ghost. You're talking about a church behind walls. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Wonderful, wonderful update. And I certainly thank and praise God for all those that serve alongside uh, Deacon Finley and the, the wonderful, capable people that we have here that serve him. Listen, uh, part of the reason that I'm glad to share that with you today is because sometimes you may think it's a small thing that we're able to, to send Bibles or we're able to, to do things uh, that kind of help uh, people behind bars when you've uh, given to the inmates that, that uh, needed toys for their children. Sometimes we think, ah, oh, that's a little small thing. But you never know the kind of impact that we can have together when we put our forces together when we put our prayers behind it and we send our support and that, that those kinds of efforts listen greater bethlehem temple church we are a blessed ministry we're a blessed ministry we want to say thank you for always being a blessing thank you not only to those that serve prison ministry but those of you that serve in so many different capacities over 60 and at uh, one time counting towards 90 distinct ministries that we have here uh, at the church and it's because of you it's because of you that we're able to uh, share the kind of success that we shared on this morning. We say thank you, Greater Bethlehem Temple Church, in its entirety. We want to say thank you for your financial contributions as well. For those of you that are here that you have a, a contribution that you want to leave with us in hand, raise your hand if you have something that you got in your hand that you want to leave. You got a contribution. Just want to, I just want to tell you how to do it. You don't, you don't have to do anything. Uh, those of you that have an in-hand contribution, at the end of service, there'll be a deacon over near the door, and we may need uh, deacons. We may need a couple of deacons uh, on a couple of doors, but there'll be a de deacon over near the door with an offering basket ready to receive those contributions. Uh, by all means, uh, you leave your gifts here in the house of the Lord, and we certainly say thank you for those of you that support the work of this ministry. Uh, for everyone else, if you have your smartphone, well, this is as close as you need to be to your offering basket. You can take your smartphone out and go to our website at gbtchurch.org in the upper, I, I, I want to always say that in the upper portion of the website, you'll see the online giving link uh, posted prominently where you can use your electronic check card, your debit card uh, to give to the Lord. Beyond that, you can text the word GIVE, G-I-V-E, to the number that's on the screen, 601-228-0769. It'll take you to the same place uh, where you can uh, use your debit card or your check card to give as well. Beyond that, use your P.O. Box number to mail in any contributions, P.O. Box 20673, Jackson, Mississippi. The zip code to use, 39289. That way we'll be able to safely and securely receive your contributions. We thank you, one and all, for your continued support. Well, are you ready for the blessing on this morning? Oh, that was, that was kind of weak. You, you ready for the blessing on this morning? You ready for the word of God? Come on, let's stand to our feet and receive our pastor as he comes in Jesus' name. Every now and then, I remind the congregation as to why we speak God's blessing over his people. I was inspired when I read in Numbers when God specifically told Moses, you tell Aaron and his son, speak this blessing over the people and let him know that when he speak this blessing, that I will bless them. Amen. I know he inspired me to do the same thing to his people today. It's just speak the blessing. Now, I want you to understand this. Your faith, your belief, bring this blessing to whatever your needs are. Amen. Hallelujah. Spoken blessing. Receive it. Apply it to wherever you, where your needs may be. God is faithful. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. sanctuary. Oh, my 
bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, let's give him a praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. As you stand, thank God for your presence today. Thank him for the presence of his spirit. Let's thank God for our music ministry. Hallelujah. We're certainly glad to have all our visitors with us. We won't take time to sing you out but because of amen our speaker I just want to make mention of Duck Hill our sister church they're with us today along with their pastor the Lord have blessed us with them hallelujah the Lord have blessed us with a wonderful week of consecration and rededication and refocusing starting Monday with fasting and praying service daily prayer service amen uh, a couple of those nights and communion service on Friday night it was a wonder it was wonderful and foot washing hallelujah amen and I, I still feel Hallelujah, the effect of last week this morning. And I just thank God for it. But we ask, and I'm, I ask my son in the gospel, amen. And I guess I'm, I've been uh, utilizing those that support me. Dr. McLaren's, amen, minister to us on Friday night. Let's thank God for Dr. McLaren. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I asked Pastor Stevenson if he would, amen, speak to our hearts on today. So let us receive, amen, our beloved brother, my son in the gospel, 
Pastor Damison Stevenson, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Preach on. God bless you. Hallelujah. Man, if you know he lives, come on and give God a hand praise. How many are excited today? Because had it not been for the Lord who was on my side, I would not be where I am. Amen. Amen. You can grab your Bible. Amen. And we're going to go to the book of Romans chapter 1 and verse 21. Certainly we salute our pastor and first lady for the wonderful leadership. Amen. And he said he asked me to preach. He walked by me one night and he said, you preaching Sunday. <laughs> so I don't know if that's asking or not, but amen. 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 I thank God for our pastor and first lady. Thank God for my wife. Amen. Thank God for my wife. Amen. And I want to, I want to, I want to clear something up. Baby, I don't know who put, who had you to come up here on Sunday morning. Yeah, if you know my wife, you know she does not like to say a whole lot. And so when Irvin called her up, I just wanted her to know I had nothing to do with that. Nothing to do with that. Amen. Amen. But I thank God for my wife and my children. Amen. And all of the saints from Doug Key, both those that are here watching online and those that are here and those that are watching online. Amen. And if y'all pray for me, we're going to get through this and so we're not going to be here all day. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. I know I'm, I'm the only thing standing between some of y'all and y'all Easter ham. So I promise you, we're not going to be long. Amen. Let's go to Romans chapter 1 and verse 21. And let's pay attention to what the Lord of this, what, what the word of the Lord says. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. And their foolish heart was darkened. Verse 22 says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Pay attention to verse 24. It says, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Verse 25 says, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Verse 26 says, for this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was men. Verse 28 says, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind, to do those things which are not convenient. Now this is Resurrection Sunday, so we can't leave it there. Come over to Psalms chapter 29 and verse two. Psalms chapter 29 and verse two. And I want you to pay attention to what it says. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Now. In Romans, Paul told them, he was concerned about the church, and he told them what happens if you don't give God the glory. David was writing, and he says, I'm going to give you a recipe so you don't have to worry about showing up to church and God don't come. I'm going to give you a recipe so you don't have an atmosphere where people gather into a building and God is not there. He, David says, I got one thing I want you to do to ensure you keep the presence of God in your midst. David said, give God the glory. David said, church, give God the glory. He said, give God the glory due unto his name. We've been talking all week about a life that glorifies God. And if y'all give me a few minutes, a few minutes on today, we're going to talk for just a couple of minutes from the subject, church, we got to give God the glory. Just say, church, we got to give God the glory. We, we can't control what the world do. We can't control what they do in the White House. But when the saints come together, when the saints gather in the midst of God's house, we got to do one thing, give God the glory. Come on and give God a hand praise. 
Amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Is that all right? If we talk about this for a few moments on today, give God the glory. Give God the glory. Give. I want you to say it until it gets in your spirit. Give God. I know everything may not be perfect. Everything may not be ideal. But make up your mind. I'm going to give God the glory. Come on and give God a hand praise on this morning. I mean, I think it is important as we're gathered in the house of God on this Resurrection Sunday that this not be just a day where we come to the house of God for a few moments and then we leave and go about our lives as normal. I believe that we would miss, amen, the meaning of this day. We would miss the meaning of resurrection if we just come and put on a nice suit or put on a nice dress and come to church, amen, for a little while and have a good time and we leave without a renewed focus on what God has done for us through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you were in Sunday school on today and they talked about the glorious gospel, we were reminded of how that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You cannot think about Jesus, think about what he did for the cross, and not be grateful that you can be saved. I, I know there are some people who uh, they're not satisfied if they don't have a new house or a new car to thank God for. They're not satisfied if they don't have a promotion to thank God for. But I believe it's one or two people in the house today that are just glad that they saved and sanctified. I, I believe it's a few people that, uh, you, you, that you don't have to, amen, give them a big deposit in their bank account. You don't have to tell them that they got a promotion coming, amen. But when they look back through the recesses of their mind and they see what God has done for them, where he's brought them from, some of us are just glad to be saved, amen. Some of us are just thankful that out of everybody in the world, Jesus looked down on little old love. Amen. I believe that there are some people in the house today. And, amen. And don't let how they look on this uh, Easter Sunday, on this Resurrection Sunday, deceive you. Some of us know, amen, beneath what we have on, on the outside, amen, there's a praise on the inside. There's a, th th there's a gratitude on the inside. There's a worship on the inside. Because when we think about where we would be if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, amen, is there anybody that'll say, God, I'm just glad he saved. I'm just, on today, I'm just grateful that I am saved. I'm just thankful. I'm thankful. Amen. And when we look at what Jesus has done for us, amen, and how that he came to save us from our sins, amen. And that does not mean a whole lot to a person that does not understand the weight of sin. That does not mean a whole lot, amen, to a person that does not appreciate what it was like to be enslaved. Now, I know there are some, amen, that will say, look, this is 2024. There is nobody living, amen, in your midst who has been enslaved, amen. But from a scriptural standpoint, I would beg to differ, amen. From a scriptural standpoint, I believe there are people enslaved right now. Amen. There are people, amen, that have habits that have enslaved them. They have people with addictions that have enslaved them. Amen. There are people, amen, that said, uh, I would like to stop doing this, but I don't know how. Uh, I would like to do better, but I don't have the strength. I don't know how to come out of this. Amen. Uh, but I'm so glad. I'm so glad on this Resurrection Sunday that somebody told me Jesus would set the captives free. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad. I'm so glad on this Sunday morning whom the Son set free free is free indeed amen there, 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 there are some of us amen that we know what it's like 
to be enslaved by the bondage of sin. We know what it's like at the beginning of the year to make a New Year's resolution and say, I'm going to do better. I'm going to stop doing this. Amen. And it lasted for a day or two. But by the week, amen, by the end of the week, we were right back to where we started. Why? Because we were enslaved. Amen. There are people, amen, that are right now, they are in prison. They, are, they don't have on a jumpsuit that says MDOC convict. They don't have shackles on their arms and on their legs. But if you could put on your spiritual glasses and look at the state of their hearts, they are enslaved. Amen. They are in prison. Amen. You ask yourself, why are some people so mean and so wicked and so evil? Why? Because their hearts have been enslaved. They don't know how to love. Amen. There are people, amen, right now, uh, that, that, that if you look at them from a natural eye, they look free, amen. But when you, they, they come in our midst, amen, they can't lift their hands, amen. They can't open their mouth, amen. Sometimes even you see people at the altar, amen, believing, uh, going after God for the Holy Ghost, and you hear the altar worker saying, open your mouth, open your mouth. Why? Because the enemy has enslaved them and he don't want them to open their mouth. He tries to hold their tongue because he knows, amen, if they call on the name of the Lord the right way, he knows if they call on the name of the Lord long enough, the devil is going to have to back up. The chains will be broken and they will be set free. Amen. If you know what it's like to be free on today, come on and give God a hand praise. Uh, one of the tricks of the enemy, if, you, if, you, if you've seen it, they talked about it in Sunday school, amen. Uh, one of the tricks of the enemy is to enslave mankind. And that's what the devil has done from the beginning of time. If you look at Adam, amen, uh, if you look at Adam in the beginning, Adam had a wonderful relationship with God, amen. Now, I like, amen, uh, to think about the story in Genesis because that really was the first church, amen. And, and, and Pastor, I get motivation from that because God himself was their pastor, amen. God was their pastor, amen. And it wasn't but God didn't have but two members in his church Elder Moore God just had two members in his church it was God and he had a man brother Adam and sister Eve that was the church amen and uh, God gives Adam his law amen he gives him his order because God will never have a people without having law in order God will never have a people without having law and order. Amen. If you can do your own thing when you want to do it, amen, you're not serving the God of this Bible, amen. If you can talk to people any kind of way and treat people any kind of way and do anything and everything, amen, you're not serving the God of this Bible, amen. Because we see when this God comes into your life, he brings law and order, amen. God takes Adam and he gives Adam his law. He tells them his commandments. He tells them what it is that he requires and what he expects. You know the story, amen. God tells Adam what he could eat, but more importantly, he tells him what he could not eat, amen. He tells Adam what he could touch, but more importantly, he tells Adam what he cannot touch, amen. And you know the story. God leaves Adam and Eve alone and then the serpent shows up, amen. And he starts talking and whispering in Eve's ear, amen. And uh, it causes Eve to fall and it causes Adam to fall, amen. And then God, amen, shows back up at his church, amen. And he's looking for his church members, amen. Now this is, I, I like this pastor because, amen, Adam and Eve did wrong and they had the best pastor they was, amen. Uh, because what I've learned, amen, is Sister uh, Jackson, grown folks are going to do what grown folks want to do, amen. You can give them the law you can give them instruction but at the end of the day everybody has a choice that they have to make for themselves amen stop blaming people if you don't want to do right amen stop amen people will say the church ain't this and uh, amen they ain't this look let me tell you something amen look you need to make up your mind for yourself you want to be saved amen and when you make up your mind for yourself that you want to be saved you'll stop looking at people and start looking at the God that can save you amen 
people will point out all the faults and the flaws of the church, amen. But can I tell you something? I'm okay with the church because God is here, amen. I'm okay with the church because Jesus is here. And as long as Jesus is here saving souls, I'm going to stay in the church, amen. As long as God is here bringing people out of what they're in, I'm going to stay in the church, amen. Uh, and so Adam and Eve mess up, amen, and God shows up looking for them, amen. I'm so glad God will look for you, amen. I'm so, so glad, amen. I'm so glad you can't run from the presence of God, amen. I'm so glad when God has you on his mind, amen, uh, when God has you on his thoughts, God will not leave you alone, amen. You've heard people say they won't leave me alone. I'm glad on today God didn't leave me alone, amen. I'm glad God don't just call us one time and if he we don't answer amen he says I'm not calling them back amen but I'm so glad God will walk you down and God will wait God will wait on you God will deal with your heart day after day month after month why because when God makes up his mind to save you nothing can stop him from saving you when God makes up his mind I'm so glad I'm so glad that God made up his mind before I made up my mind I, 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 look, 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 can I tell y'all why I'm saved and in the church today? I'm not saved because I made up my mind to be saved. I'm, mad, I'm, I'm saved because God made up his mind to save me, amen. And I'm so, so thankful, amen, uh, that we serve a God that will save anybody, amen. I'm so glad. You know, uh, I was at a church one time and I saw that somebody was coming and the pastor asked the deacons to vote if they were going to take them in. I'm so glad God. God didn't have to take a vote with nobody. I'm, I'm so glad God didn't have to call a deacon meeting, a trustee meeting, amen. I'm so glad, amen, that because of what Jesus did on the cross, amen, God didn't have to take counsel with anybody, amen, but he could just take his blood and apply it to my life and wash away the sins. I'm, I'm so glad that God could take the blood of Jesus and break the chains and the shackles that had me bound. Amen? If I had to wait on people, I might still be in my sin. If I had to wait on people, I might still be lost. But I'm so glad it was only one vote that mattered, and that was the vote of Jesus. That's why we praising Jesus on today. That's why we giving him glory on today because he did for us what nobody else could do. And the good news, he's still saving. He's still healing. He's still delivering. Oh. Y'all sit down. It's Easter. It's Easter. Sit down. Sit down. Don't mess up y'all good clothes. Hey, Amen. Uh, God called Adam and he said, where are you? Where, where are you? God don't ask questions to get information. He's all knowing. God asks questions to give revelation. God was letting Adam know. I know Adam. You're not what you're supposed to be. He, he was letting Adam know. I know what you not I know you're not what you're supposed you're not what you're supposed to be, but I still want to call you back to where you're supposed to be. I, I, I'm, I'm so glad that when sin had a hold on me and I couldn't see God, I'm glad God could still see me. I, I, I'm glad. I'm so, so glad. Amen. People say. I'm going to come to church when I get myself together. You'll never make it. You can't get yourself together. But there is a God who will come where you are. There is a God, amen, that will apply the blood of Jesus to your life. He'll wash you. He'll save you. He'll clean you up. He'll sanctify you. That's why we give him the glory. Amen. God says, Adam, where are you? Why? Because he was setting the stage for salvation. When you look through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, it is about salvation. Amen. Even when you come over to the New Testament, amen, uh, John see Jesus coming. And he says, behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of of the world, amen. Behold the Lamb of God, amen, which taketh 
away the sins. I couldn't, amen, sell my sins. I didn't have enough money, amen, to buy myself out of this. My, my family name wasn't good enough to take away my sins, amen. But there was a lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world, amen. I mean, Dr. McLaurin talked about it, amen, on Friday night, amen, and he talked about this scripture, amen, and it stood out to me about how he nailed, amen, those things that were against us, amen, to the cross, amen, uh, and then that helped me appreciate something, amen, all of our issues, all of our hangups, amen, they were covered by Calvary. When Jesus, amen, was up there on that cross, amen, every lie you ever told, every time you said something you didn't have no business, every time you fell asleep in a place you didn't have no business, Jesus was up there dealing with it on Calvary. Why? Because if I don't do something, they'll die in their sins. If I don't do something, they'll be forever lost in a devil's hell. Amen. And God says, I refuse, amen, to make a creation and the devil have the last say so. I refuse to make a creation, amen, and the devil gets the victory. So God says, I'm going to do something, amen. I'm going to do something, amen, so that I can save them. I'm going to do something so that I could bring them back to me, amen. That's why Jesus was on that cross, and I believe it, amen. God was a holy God, and we were unholy, amen. So we needed somebody to stand in the middle. We needed somebody to stand in the gap. And so Jesus was on that cross, amen, one hand towards a holy God and another hand towards unholy people. And he says, I can bring them together. I can get man back to their rightful place. And that's why we're in the house today worshiping God. Why? Because now I'm saved. Now I'm blood blind. Now I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. People, people look at saints and they say, y'all do too much, amen. Y'all do all of that running around and jumping up and down and all of them songs and all of that testimonies, amen. Look, if you knew my story, if you knew what it took for me to get away from the clutches of the enemy, if you knew how I had to fight and pray and cry and I had to cry, fight and pray, I had to call on the name of the Lord, if you knew what it took to get me out of what I was in, you would understand why I prayed. If you knew how messed up some of us were, we were messed up in our minds, messed up in our hearts. Oh, but the blood of the Lamb set us free. People have no idea some of the stuff that some of us were in. And look, can, can I tell y'all, since it's just us, can we talk? Sometimes people think that children, Sister Quinn, that grow up in the church don't have to come out of nothing. People sometimes think that children who've been in the church have not been exposed to anything. Y'all have no idea how some saints' children go to church on Sunday and some of the stuff they be into in between Sundays. Uh, but the reason y'all have no idea is because of y'all prayers, God is covering them. Mm. Beca because of y'all prayers, God is keeping them. That's why the enemy fights some of the saints' children, and he don't want them to get free because he knows what's in them, amen. He knows, amen, what's on the inside, amen. But I'm, I'm so glad, amen, that it don't matter where you are or what you dealing with. There is a God that can come in your life. There is a God that can set you free. Uh. And see, that presents the problem that Paul was dealing with because Paul was writing a letter and he was saying, look, I need the church to understand something. I need the church to be clear about certain things. In the book of one, Romans chapter one, Paul was telling them what happens when you know God and don't glorify God. Paul was telling them what happens because see, Paul had enough experience with God to understand God does not stay anywhere where he's not wanted. Let me say that again. God does not stay anywhere where he's not wanted. 
And the thing about God, God says, I won't give my glory to another. So then the church has to make a corporate decision. Are we going to praise you or are we going to praise God? The, 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 the church has to make a corporate decision. If we want the presence of God when we come in our midst, who are we going to talk about? Who are we going to exalt? Because Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw. If you want to talk about your car or your house or you want your own. But he says, when you come together, if two or three are gathered in my name, if you will open your mouth and start giving me the glory, I'll save those children. I'll fix those marriages. I'll heal your body. I'll bless your mind. I'll put peace in your spirit. And see, that's why Paul was concerned about the church. Paul says, I don't want the church to be a social club. I don't want the church to be a hangout spot. And if you come together and you do a lot of stuff, but you don't give God the glory, God's presence will leave. That's why scripture says God gave them over. Y'all, can I tell y'all something I saw? God can punish you without punishing you. God don't have to whoop you. God don't have to beat you down. All God has to do is take his hands off. And when God takes his hand off, you are self-destruct. This is why when David was in trouble with God, he said, Lord, whatever you do, don't take your spirit from me. Whatever you do, don't cast me away. If you have to punish me, punish me. If you have to chastise me, chastise me. But just let me stay in the family. Let me stay a child of God. Whatever happens, I want you to stay my God. See, Paul was concerned. I, I was listening to a church this morning. I got up and the preacher said, look at your neighbor and say there's greatness in you. God help us when we come here and praise each other. We build each other up, but we don't talk about the greatness of God. <laughs> See, people come to church and they get offended because we don't praise them. You were never the one we were supposed to praise. <laughs> See, we live in a generation we live in a generation that tell people, you're going to put some respect on my name. See, that's the problem. There's one name here we respect. There's one name here we glorify. I don't care what your position is. I don't care what your title is. You didn't die on a cross. You didn't bring me out of sin. You didn't set me free. So all of my worship, all of my praise goes to God and God alone. Excuse me if I don't give you your prop, but if you know what Jesus had did for me, if you knew how many times I thought I was going to lose my mind and he brought me out, you would understand why I worship him. Y'all sit down. I told y'all this Easter, we just talking. We just talking. See, when people don't understand your story, they'll never understand your relationship. When people don't understand your story, they'll never understand your worship. See, David was bringing back the ark of God. See, one thing about David, David wasn't perfect. David made some mistakes, but David understood, I need God. David understood, I need God. David was bringing back the ark because the ark represented the presence of God. And David's wife, who was in the palace, who was living good, whose daddy was a king, she looked at David. And David was acting what some people would say was unseemly. David was acting unprofessional. David was acting ignorant and undignified. And so she had a problem because she thought, Sister Shirley, because of David's position, he, didn't, he shouldn't act like that. But what she didn't know is that David knew it was God that gave me the position. <laughs> well, what she didn't know is when her father was trying to kill David, God kept him alive. So when you know who sustained you, when you know who kept you, when you know who provided for you. See, I can't forget. See, some people's problems is that they have short memories. But those of us that can remember what God did, 
See, it's, a, it's, it's five of us in the building that we remember what God did for us. We remember when nobody else was there and we called on the name of the Lord and he came where we were and he brought us out. And you think I'm going to come in the church and not give him glory? You think I'm going to come in the church and not exalt him? I'm like David. If you got a problem with my worship, let him keep me another week. Let him make another door. I'm going to keep giving him the glory. Don't let folk who don't know what God has done for you stop your praise. Baby, you weren't there in the midnight hour. You didn't make ways. You didn't keep my mind when I was about to lose my mind. I'm not praising God because I don't have good sense. I'm praising him because I got good sense. I know who deserves the glory. I know who deserves the honor. I know who deserves the worship. Some of us, ain't Joe, some of us, we don't need the right preacher. We don't need the musicians to hit all the notes. All we need is a good memory. All I need every now and then, Lord, just remind me of where you brought me from. Remind me of what you did for me. Remind me about how you kept me. Remind me about how you made ways. Remind me about doors you opened. Remind me how close I was to the gates of hell, but you lifted me. When you see me running and ain't nobody chasing me, it's because I got something on my mind. I'm thinking of his goodness. I'm thinking of his faithfulness. I'm thinking of his mercy. Y'all. Y'all, we... See, Jeremiah. Jeremiah had went through something. He said, I ain't going to testify no more. I ain't going to preach no more. I'm just going to sit down. But while he was sitting there, God dropped a thought in his mind. While he was sitting there, he started looking back over his life. While he was sitting there, he remembered the goodness of God. While he was sitting there, he remembered the faithfulness of God. And Jeremiah said it was like fire shut up in my bones. Now, we try to act de de decent, we try to act educated, but sometimes that fire of the Holy Ghost starts burning and it won't let me sit still. I have to throw up my hands. I have to open my mouth and give him the glory. <sighs> when fire hits you, you have to move. When fire hits you, you got to do something. It is impossible for a child of God that's been redeemed to look back over their life and gratitude not get in their spirit. This is why scripture says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed. I want you to know something. Every blood blood believer, every child, amen, of God, you got a testimony in your mouth. Amen. You can open your mouth, and you may not be able to quote Genesis through Revelation, but you can talk about how he brought you out of sin. You can talk about how he saved your soul. You can talk about how he put love in your heart. You can talk about how he put peace in your spirit. Ugh. And this is why David, I'm about to go to my seat. David was talking and he was saying, if they'll put up Psalms 29 and 2, look, one place, David, when you study the life of David, David had highs and David had lows. One place they were talking about stone in David. They, the Bible talks about how David wept almost till he could weep no more. So David, a man had situations where Saul was shooting at him and wanted him dead. And David says, it was one thing that kept me in the good 
good times and it kept me in the bad times. It kept me when everything was going right and it kept me when everything was going wrong. Amen. David says, I always gave God the glory. Amen. This is why it is easy to sit in the sanctuary on a Sunday and say, I will bless the Lord at all times. But what do you do when a phone call comes your way you didn't expect? What do you do when the devil knocks at your door and says, what are you going to do now? You got to say, I'm going to do what I've always done. I'm going to give him the glory. I'm going to do what I've always done. I'm going to give him the praise. You got to say like Job, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. You got to let the devil know my worship is not conditioned on where I am. It's not conditioned on money in my bank. I, when I think of the goodness of God and all he's done for me. David said, the only thing that you need is give God the glory. And pay attention to what he says. And I'm going to take my seat. He says, give him the glory that's due his name. Lord, if you never heal me, you still worthy of the glory. If you never fix my broken situation, if you never do what I want you to do, He's been given a name that's above every name, amen. One scripture says every knee shall bow, but I'm not waiting till I'm forced to bow. I'm going to bow right now. I'm going to give him the glory right now. I'm going to give him the praise right now. I'm not going to let the devil intimidate me with the circumstances of life. I'm not going to let the devil cause me to shut up my mouth because things are not going good. But when I think of the name of the Lord, when I think about what he's done for me, uh, Church, when we come together, we got one assignment, to give his name glory. When we come together, forget about who preaching, who singing, who doing this, and who doing that. And think of the goodness of God. Think of the difference his name made. David said, if you want to keep the presence of God in the church, if you want to keep God in the midst of his saints. When you come together, forget about you, forget about your thoughts, forget about people say, well, I just didn't like that. It ain't about you. People say, well, I didn't care for that. It ain't about you. Regardless of what street you live on, regardless of your educational level, regardless of what you drive, we all got one thing in common. The name of the Lord saved us. The name of the Lord brought us out. That's why. David said, give unto the Lord. You got to give God what's due him. Saints, as I go to my seat, make up your mind on this Resurrection Sunday. Lord, if you don't do anything else, you've already done enough. Lord, you don't have to promise me anything to worship you. You don't have to promise me anything to bring you out. Just remind me of what Jesus did for me. Remind me when I was dead in my sins, but I stood on that altar and I said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Until you got in my language and something else came out. And when I think about this, I'm gonna lift my hands. Praise team, you're not gonna have to beg me. When I think of what he's done, I'm gonna lift my hands, I'm gonna open my mouth, and I'm gonna give God the glory. God bless you in Jesus' name. Nothing good that I've done, I don't deserve God's own son, and I'm not worthy of the nails in his hand, but yet he chose the road to Calvary to die in my stead why he left me I just can't understand 
Lord roll back the curse of a memory now and then show me where you brought me from and where I could have been but remember that I'm human and human love forget so remind remind me dear Lord how many know where he brought you from Lord rose the curse But remember that I'm human, human. and human. A memory Lord, show me Show me Where you brought me from And where I could have been Remember That I'm human And human preacher said or oh, he read the scripture rather that David gave in song 29 he said give him due glory due praises but he said do it in the beauty in the beauty of holiness hallelujah he's telling us not so much make a loud noise but he said praise him with holiness hallelujah amen let me tell you all this he's worthy of all the praise and all the glory I know we are somewhat thankful for all that he does for us I'm sure we're convinced now we can't make it without the Lord. We really need him. I've seen a person that really not giving God much when it comes to living. But I saw a moment where he had a need. And you know what he was doing? He was calling on Jesus. Amen. Don't only call on him. Amen. When you're in that real moment of need but let calling on him be something that you do at all time hallelujah let me tell you this the lord love us the scripture let us know that he proves his love take a look at calvary but take a look at all what he went through even before calvary hallelujah Amen. He did it for us because he wants to save us. Hallelujah. A golden text said this morning, for God so loved the world in our Sunday school 
that he gave his only begotten son. He gave him in order that we can be saved. The first time Jesus came, the scripture let us know. He didn't come to condemn us, but he came to save us. He's coming again, but he's going to come then to judge us. Hallelujah. You that are here today, after hearing God's word, let it be a reminder to you that Jesus loves you and the Lord wants to save you. He, go, he wants to be there to help you and whatever life bring to you. He let us know that, amen, he wants us to praise him with our life. You that are here today, after hearing search word, hallelujah, I want you to I want to invite you to that person that the preacher was preaching about. Hallelujah. I want you to invite you, amen, to make a commitment to him to give him your life. Let me tell you this. If you're not saved, you're in a dangerous place. Hallelujah. The death of Jesus, amen, is going to be useless to you if you don't believe in him. If you don't amen, accept him. Hallelujah. I'm not just making this altar call, but I, the Holy Ghost is making the altar call in some of you all hearts now. He is inviting you to come to the great and awesome God, the one and only Jesus Christ. I'm going to ask you to be obedient to that. If God is dealing with your heart, if he's speaking to you, it's your day. It's your time. He said, the day that you hear my voice, don't harden your heart. Hallelujah. If I were you, I'd be making my way to these aisles, and I'll be finding my way to the altar. Hallelujah. Because you want real help. You want real deliverance. Hallelujah. Amen. The message was for you today. Hallelujah. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Get up and come on. Hallelujah. You're coming to Jesus. Hallelujah. Do you want help? Do you want somebody that going to be with you? that's going to see you through. Somebody that is all powerful. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody, amen. Amen. That will make you what he wants you to be. I invite you to come today. Some of you, amen, been here once before, but you left and you went back. I'm inviting you to come on back. In the name of Jesus, why don't you come today? Why don't you come today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Will you stand with me? Church, will you be praying with me? Hallelujah. 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 The Lord say come. The Spirit say come. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Do you want to be saved? Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may not know altogether why you're coming, but the Lord is pulling on you, telling you to come because he want to do something for you. Hallelujah. Amen. You said, well, I just came to church because it's Easter. I'm really not one of those that go to church. But I want you to know, hallelujah, God does on Easter what he do on every Sunday. Amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He, he, he deliver on Easter. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Just like any other time, will you come? Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord is, uh, the Spirit is pulling on you. Hallelujah. The Spirit pulling on you. It's telling you to come. 
is telling you it's time to make a change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I, I want to get right. I I'm, I'm tired. Hallelujah. Amen. Of living a certain way. I'm tired of doing certain things. Somebody saying, I need real deliverance. I need real deliverance. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody, amen, saying, I need help. I, I need help. Hallelujah. I want you to know there's help in the house. There's help in the house. There's real deliverance in the house. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. The Lord making himself available to his people. He's making himself available to his people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of you need a special touch. Hallelujah. You need, amen, a special touch. You need prayer. The altar's open. The altar's open. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? As the praise team sing, hallelujah. As God speaks to your heart, let the Lord bless you today. Let the Lord bless you today. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. need to make up their mind.
Let your life be a testimony. You have a
baptism, but while we're waiting, you still can come. Come to Jesus, why don't you come?
Two for baptism. Let's pray for those at the altar.
precious God because of your goodness because of your mercy and your great love that you have demonstrated toward us an unfathomable love we can't figure why you would go through what you went through to deliver us but we're convinced that you love us we thank you for your presence. We thank you for the presence of your spirit. We ask you to bless this soul that has come. Fill them with your spirit. Send them on their way rejoicing. We'll praise you for it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My dearly beloved sister, upon the confession of your faith concerning the death burial and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the confidence upon which you have in the blessed word of God I now indeed baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin in Jesus name in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ